Capital Views is sponsored by North Rim Bank, Alaska Oil and Gas Association, ConocoPhillips, and Linden. Hi, I'm Tim Brandon with Capital Views, and welcome today with Commissioner Kathy Munoz, the Commissioner Designee for the Department of Labor and Workforce Development. Thanks for joining us, Kathy. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here today. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, your uh, agency uh, is very focused on workforce development and training. And I wonder if you could tell us a bit about some of the training initiatives. Uh, uh, I've always been interested in how TVEP is going and how that works and particularly the unique arrangement for funding it, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. how, how does TVEP look this year? So TVEP is up for reauthorization. Uh, TVEP is a, a program that's that's set up statutorily that takes a portion of the employee's share of the employment security tax and directs it toward a vocational education. And in the law, there are there are eight or nine named recipients, including the University of Alaska, that receive a designation out of the TVEP funding. But again, that is up for reauthorization this year, and uh, we look forward to that, the dialogue with the legislature on, on its um, reauthorization. So where are some of the recipients? Some of them are their regional training centers, aren't they, in, in addition to the university? Right. The university gets 45% of TVEP funding, and then you have Avtech uh, receives funding, Galena, uh, the Alaska Technical Center up in Kotzebue, Illisavik College. So the funding goes all over the state to the re regional training providers. Uh, generally, TVEP uh, generates about $13 million a year in funding. And as, a, as I said earlier, it goes out through a statutory formula. Um, Aptech, for instance, gets 17%. The university gets 45%. And they, the designations vary uh, from there. And of course, Avtech is located in Seward and focuses more on marine training. Uh, Avtech is Alaska's vocational technical center in Seward, yes. And marine training is one component of uh, Avtech training. Uh, we offer a wide range of trainings in uh, everything from diesel mechanics to refrigeration to carpentry. We also do remote trainings. We work with the business community on designing employee, uh, employer design trainings that can be given all over the state. And Avtech Ad is the only uh, training facility actually operated by the department. Is correct. That right? Yes, that's correct. We also have a um, very close relationship with regional training programs, private, um, nonprofit, union, non-union all over the state through our funding streams and not just Avtech, but we also um, have a program that we implement called STEP, uh, the State Training and Employment Program. Those grants go out uh, statewide on a competitive basis uh, and they go to schools all the way from uh, Illisavik College in the Arctic all the way down to Southern Southeast. Uh, Kathy, could you say something about the um, what happens to people when they graduate from from career training, career and technical training? Uh, as I recall, customarily they they're pretty quick in getting jobs, and the wage growth is pretty substantial. Uh, hmm. Do you have any any uh, any recent statistics? In sure. Mind? Well, uh, this last spring we did a marketing campaign targeting young workers that are young uh, potential trainees that are uh, coming out of high school. So our, our marketing campaign targeted 18 year olds all the way up to 30 year olds, right? And so we were um, very pleased with the results. Our training uh, support is up about 35% this year um, in FY, the current fiscal year compared to the previous fiscal year. And those are industry certified trainings that result in a job. So our training um, support is, is way up. One of my goals as commissioner designee has, and acting commissioner um, was to really get the word out about the opportunities that are available through our job centers for training support. Uh, Alaskans can, can access those uh, training funds through the job centers. There are 14 job centers around the state. 
Uh, and just you mentioned the uh, the uh, uh, participation is is way up based on the survey. Uh, what kind of participation is it? The uh, offerings by by the uh, training providers or or the enrollment? correct? Yes, these are industry certified trainings. Everything from CDL training to mine uh, training. We we have a close partnership with the Delta Mine Training Center, for instance, in Delta. Um, we have uh, we train we support uh, programs that offer welding uh, welding certifications, CDL licensure. Uh, we work with the unions on their training programs. We support uh, many of the union training pr programs as well. Yeah, and I guess uh, electrical and technical training in broadband is a whole new area. Uh, I know uh, IBW and some of the unions are very active in that. Correct. Yes, we we work closely with the unions uh, to support the training uh, for uh, solar uh, voltaic installation, for instance, this is a new area of, of uh, growth, really, because of all of the infrastructure money, the alternative energy money coming to the state. So we want to make sure that the workforce is prepared for for that type of work. Uh, Kathy, just in the in, in the short time we have left, um, can you say anything right about how workforce issues look right now? <clears throat> I mean, are we recruiting enough people? Do do we have shortages? If through the system that are pretty apparent, we have we, we definitely have shortages, just like every state in the country has experienced workforce challenges coming out of COVID. Um, some of that had to, a lot of that had to do with the aging workforce and people moving into retirement during the, the COVID that COVID period. Um, we we have a number of different strategies that we're working on at the department to to. Um, increase our working age population. We're doing uh, career guide. We have a pilot project, for instance, with the Department of Ed to put career guides in our job centers and in certain communities around the state to work closely with the high schools to make sure that, that young people are aware of all of the different opportunities that are available, available in our state. We also are strengthening our relationship with JBEAR, our military partnerships uh, to ensure that more Alaskans that are exiting active service are staying in Alaska and choosing good paying jobs in state. Um, we're also, we've uh, reestablished the Office of Citizenship Assistance, which is working with legal immigrants and uh, refugees on training and employment. So again, we have a number of different strategies that we're working on and, you know, it's a very focused effort and working very closely too with the business community to address their workforce needs. Well, that's a full plate of things, Kathy. <laughs> you must, you must be very... well, There's a lot going on. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you.